That's so serious. Crazy, right? <laughs> it was interesting coming to terms with like letting go of that like dream that I've had for like X amount of years. Right? It is a platform to organize baby computers. Oh. <laughs> How's it going? It's Mayuko. Today I am joined by Amy Codes. She is a system software engineer and she also has her own YouTube channel talking about tech things. So welcome Amy. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, thank you for being here. Um, so today I thought we would talk about kind of like what your background has been, how you got into tech. Um, a lot of y'all are really interested in that sort of stuff. And so mm. now that we have someone who does some, something pretty different from what I do, yeah. um, I thought we could do that. And also you could check out her channel where she talks more about this stuff. Uh, later as well. Cool. cool, that sounds awesome. So my first question I have for you, Amy, is how did you get into software engineering? That is a really good question. So actually, it was a, it's a very serendipitous story. Ooh. So in college, freshman year, um, I studied cellular biology and neuroscience. Whoa. So I was pre-med. Up until that point, I was like, I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be a surgeon. Mm -hmm. um, and freshman year, I realized, like, yeah, this is not really going to work out. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you remember the online platform Omegle, where it's like you get matched with like a random person. So I used to have like five hour conversations on the messenger text thingy mm -hmm. with these like random strangers. And one of them, I happened to be talking to him and I happened to be also picking classes at the time. Mm -hmm. And then he goes, oh, you should try computer science. So I was like, okay, why not? <laughs> I don't, like, and so that is like the crazy story of like how I got into uh, computer science, software engineering, yeah. and the rest is history. Dang, um, that's so serious. Crazy, right? <laughs> Have you had connected with that person? Yeah, um, and I like oh. kept in touch with him for maybe like a year and a half or so. He helped me get my first internship. It's funny how we all like like randomly find the things that we're meant to do for the rest of our lives. Yeah, I mean it's like I love my job, I love what I do, and I, I have like a also serendipitous thing in terms of like how I got into the niche that I got into, which I can talk about later maybe. Yeah. A lot of my life is just Really serendipitous, it's I guess. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> or I'm just open to it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Had you yeah. ever like coded before you declared your major in like high school? Or um, no. I mean, in high school, I was part of this like summer program where they like briefly talked about like circuits and code and stuff, but like nothing stuck. I wasn't mm. super interested in it. Um, I don't think it was like a super like strong introduction into computer science type stuff. So I don't know that I counted mm -hmm. as much because mm -hmm. I didn't find my interest in computer science at that program. Mm -hmm. uh, the, I mean, the program was great and like the people there were great. Um, but yeah, prior to that, nope, didn't code. <laughs> yeah. When you were in, like, in high school, you weren't like, oh, I'm gonna study computer science. Computer no, computer no, 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 no. It's not no, always on your no. mind at all. And on my mind, like, I, I was also like a certified EMT in high school. Whoa. So like, yeah, full, like, full speed away in terms of like, I want to be a doctor, you know? Yeah. So it was interesting coming to terms with like letting go of that like dream that I've had for like mm. X amount of years, mm -hmm. right? But I think it's also due to like being naive and young and like not knowing what else is out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was- You don't know what you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. a pretty crazy story. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I wanted to ask you like, how did you get into the niche that you did get into for software engineering? Yeah, sure. So um, in my internships and stuff, like that, I had been doing backend web development. I had two internships at Behance, so I did backend web development for that. I knew, like, after, like, for when I, when I was searching for full time employment, I didn't want to do back end web development. It wasn't that I was an expert by any means, but it was, to me, it felt like I was turning a lot out a lot of, like, CRUD apps, um, mm -hmm. like, CRUD API things. So I felt like I had done a lot of that and I wanted to try something new. Mm -hmm. And so my friend, she just goes, yeah, follow this girl. Her name is Jessie Frizzell on Twitter. And I was like, okay. And then she started talking about Go, the programming language, about containers, about container orchestration. And so I was like, oh, this seems really interesting. Mm -hmm. So about three months prior to like interviewing full time, I learned Go. Mm -hmm. And then I started interviewing for all these like infrastructure companies. Oh, cool. So that's sort of like, 
how it was also serendipitous. Like if my friend hadn't told me to follow this person, yeah. I would have never, never known. Yeah. yeah. So you work at Heptio right now yes. in Seattle. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you do there? Yeah. So I am a system software engineer, and what that means is is that I work in distributed systems. So like a lot of systems interacting with each other. And so day to day, I work with the programming language Go. Um, I also work with a lot of containers, Kubernetes, um, and do development on that. Mm -hmm. And so the main goal of Heptio is ultimately to make Kubernetes easy to use. And then um, the other main thing is we want to work really tightly with upstream Kubernetes and not make, for instance, our own like Kubernetes distro. That's like not the aim at all. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's that's what I work on. And that's like awesome. I love the founders. I love my coworkers. Yeah, um, that's really cool. Work is Can great. I ask a stupid question? No stupid questions. <laughs> There's no stupid questions. Go ahead. What What is Kubernetes exactly? Sure. So let me, I've actually done talks about this before. So Ooh. let me start from the beginning. Are you familiar with a container is? Not really. Okay. <laughs> totally cool too. Are you familiar with a virtual machine is? Sort of. Okay, cool. So uh, for those of you who don't know, virtual machines are a way for you to virtualize another operating system within your machine. So mm -hmm. let's say you have like Windows and you want to run like a Mac operating system. That's not what containers are, <laughs> but it's like the best way, it's the best analogy that I think mm -hmm. most people find tangible. So for containers, what it is is it uh, virtualizes another operating system. So you can containerize things and make it run in the specific operating system. Mm -hmm. And so the main thing for containers is that it's a way to easily reproduce your uh, your infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So let's say like you're working locally, right? Mm -hmm. And you have, you know, a Mac OS, um, you have Python 3.5, I, I don't know what version is the latest. I don't I don't work with Python, mm -hmm. but you have uh, Python 3.5 and then you have like other things that you've installed. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is like you don't want to have a situation in which it's like, oh, well, it works on my machine, mm -hmm. right? So let's say someone else has Python 3.7 or something like that. Mm -hmm. So you want to make it consistent in production. Mm -hmm. So what you do is, is you containerize your, like, let's say web application. So mm -hmm. you put that into a binary and then um, you make sure that there's a lot of like setup scripts and things like that that make sure that you have uh, the correct operating system, mm -hmm. um, the same versioning, things like that, and you containerize that. Mm -hmm. On top of that, there's a lot of things. Um, and so the way I like to describe containers is that it's a baby computer mm -hmm. inside a larger computer where mm -hmm. the larger computer is your server. Mm -hmm. So the other thing we need to do is have another organizational structure on top of our baby computers. So there's things like networking, there's like how each container will like uh, talk to each other. There's things like scheduling. So if a container dies, like what happens then? Mm -hmm. So that's like a lot of like organizational things on top of that, that mm -hmm. Kubernetes as a platform provides. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that was a good explanation. Um, but yeah, so the way I like to describe Kubernetes is that it is a platform to organize baby computers. Oh. <laughs> Analogy. Yeah, okay. so like, yeah, I, get it I think it, like people make it more complicated than it is. Mm -hmm. um, and the reality is it's like, it's pretty approachable. I, I'll like give you a link to maybe one of my talks that yeah. I've done at KubeCon and Ooh. I think it's a pretty good, pretty good intro and I'll like try to like turn that talk into a video as well eventually. Yeah, um, that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah, check it out in the description box below for her talk. It's really <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's, uh, it's like a fun space. I yeah. love infrastructure stuff and cool. I love working with different systems. Yeah, so that that's really awesome, Amy. I am really curious, like kind of what are your current goals and like what are the things that you are trying to improve and accomplish within your career? Yeah, so currently my main focus is just like clocking in time as an engineer and really understanding the domain that I work in, like the niche that I work in, and just, I would love to be, I don't know if like well-known is the good word, but like, respected for my knowledge mm -hmm. in distributed systems and Kubernetes and things like that. And mm -hmm. that's like my current goal. Mm -hmm. And then also my company, actually they have a really amazing remote culture. Mm -hmm. So eventually it would be really cool to like 
sort of like live a semi like digital nomad sort of life because I love traveling. Yeah. Um, obviously, I need money to travel. I also happen to like my job, so I'm really lucky in that sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's like I just want to become. I want to ramp up as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to become like a team tech lead at some point. You know, like lead direction of a product that we develop or maybe like an important feature, mm -hmm. and just keep on growing. And in terms of like outside like direct work kind of stuff, mm -hmm. um, other things I want to do is so I already do some tech conference speaking. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to ramp up more to do more like deep dives in mm -hmm. terms of my conference speaking. Mm -hmm. um, maybe keynote eventually. We'll see. Ooh. Grow my YouTube channel. You know, just trying to be a boss ass bitch, you know? Yeah. So. <laughs> yes. yes, queen. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited for you. <laughs> oh my god, thank you. <laughs> you know, just trying my best. <laughs> We're all just trying our best, We're everyone. We're just, you know, life, life is hard. Life is hard. But it's like, also long and short, so we just try to just, do our best. <laughs> yeah. It, yes. Yes, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. So, Amy, you also have a YouTube channel, like you mentioned. Yeah. You talk about a lot of different stuff. Can you tell us a little bit more about your YouTube channel? And yeah. So, I started it in March, but I only recently became more consistent. Mm -hmm. uh, the YouTube channel is Amy Codes. Yeah. So, what I like to talk about is like technical and non technical aspects of being a software engineer. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out like a good balance between like vlogging and like technical stuff mm -hmm. and or like even daily, like not daily vlogs, but like a real life walking around kind of vlog. Mm -hmm. um, still trying to figure that out, but I think like whatever content I put out there, y'all will hopefully appreciate. And that's yeah. a lot of fun to make. Yeah, and yeah. I think y'all will really like it a lot. Ah. I think it's very similar sort of to like my yeah. world. I was, I well, know. I wanted to mention that like, I was so happy. So this morning we got brunch together mm -hmm. and throughout the entire time I was like, oh my God, this is the first time I'm meeting another like tech YouTuber. And it's like, we can talk about similar things and like relate to each other. It's, it, this is a fun space. I think yeah, you would agree. Totally. Yeah. And I think it's up and coming too, so it's a really exciting time. Yes, it is such an exciting time. <laughs> Come join us. This revolution. Yeah. Disruption. <laughs> So the last question I have for Amy is, what advice do you have for people who are just getting into software engineering and starting out? That is a good question. So I think one piece of advice, and it's like not for everyone, but if, if you identify with this, then it is so incredibly beneficial. And so what I would say is, is like, create content about the things that you're learning about because it really gets yourself out there. It, it attracts an audience that relate to similar things. You may think that the thing that you're, you're trying to write about is too basic or whatever, but that is so not true. People are, are, are starting from somewhere, right? And they will relate to the content that you create. Your perspective is so important and having different pers perspectives about even the same topic, maybe like, People have already talked about this, but like having a diff different perspective and a different way to teach it mm -hmm. is so valuable. For me, I have found creating content to be incredibly valuable in terms of like hunting down jobs because it's like, you may not perform super well on that day at your interview or whatever, but people will give you the benefit of the doubt from all the content that you've created and be like, she knows what she's talking about. She's done conference talk on, talks on this. She's made YouTube videos about this. She's written blog posts about this. And I think that if you have the time for it, if you're the kind of person that's interested in this stuff, um, create content, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and you did this while you were in school as well. I right? did, yeah. I did do this. I wrote like blog posts. Yeah, like I tried like talking at like meetups and things like that. Mm -hmm. And also it's just like builds the muscle memory of like creating content in itself. Mm -hmm. I think initially people are too obsessed with releasing perfect content, which is another piece of advice. If you do want to create content, done is better than perfect, right? Just like keep on releasing, keep on iterating, and eventually you'll get better at it. And like no one really cares if like the thing that you create is not perfect on the first shot. Like yeah. that's not an expectation. Mm -hmm. Like the more you practice and the more you release, the better that you'll get. That's so true. Yeah. yeah. And you don't have to wait until you graduate college in order to do these no. things. No. Yeah. yeah. Start yeah. anywhere. Teaching other people really emphasizes and uh, like helps your 
memory and like helps yes. you to retain it better. So yes. teaching is one of the best ways to learn things yourself. Yes. Um, one of my friends who's a consistent conference speaker, mm -hmm. she actually like like learns things so that she can talk about them. Totally do this too. You yeah. don't have to be an expert already mm -hmm. in order to talk at conferences because when you are learning these things, it's when it's freshest in your mind. Yes. And you have the mindset of a learner that you can teach other people in the best way. Honestly, like I think within our industry, something that is very very undervalued is empathy mm. and like you only learn something once right mm -hmm. and like having that perspective fresh in your mind and codifying it mm -hmm. and like formalizing that knowledge while you are still learning this new thing is so valuable because mm -hmm. people forget like what they trip up on when they first yeah. learn something mm -hmm. so that like empathy to like understand where these people are coming from that this topic even though other people find it's like super easy is like probably super hard for like people first coming into whatever niche that you're talking about um and so i think creating content also helps with like that level of empathy and will eventually like bring you on to huge and amazing paths. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. really good advice. Yeah. Thanks, Amy. So that's it for today. Amy, thank you so much for being on my channel. We had a lot of fun. We also did a collab on her channel, so don't forget to check that out. It'll be in the description box or somewhere in this area. <laughs> and as always, like this video and comment down below for what should we ask them to comment about? Uh, we should ask them to comment what, uh, what, who are your favorite YouTube content creators and what kind of content would you like to see from tech YouTubers? Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've always been curious about like what audiences are interested in. Yeah. So. so comment down below for that and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos. Awesome. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Hello. Hello. Hello, my Yukos friends. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Timer's going. Okay. Okay.